guys welcome back so today we're just gonna do a little chit chat get ready with me um, I'm not going anywhere I'm just getting ready to film a few videos so I thought why not just film me getting ready um, this is not like gonna be a makeup tutorial but if you guys would like a makeup tutorial let me know but we're just gonna do a little chit a little chat and that's what we're gonna do today I don't know if, I, I don't know if I've said this before but I work um, that's not the one I work in corporate America, um, and I've learned that being in corporate America can be so exhausting. Being a black person in corporate America can be so exhausting, like, it's just, like, not even on no funny stuff, like, the fact of the matter is, you know, black people and white people, we just have two different cultures, like, we're just not cut from the same cloth. Like, it's not even on no racist stuff. It's just, like, we're just different. And I remember when I first started working at my job, I talk, I called my mom, and I was like, you know, we should get another check for code switching. Like, it's so tiring having to, like, laugh at whack jokes, you know, having to kind of check yourself before you react to anything because you don't want to be looked at as like the angry black person and then along with that not even be able to check things the way you would like to because you can't and I know for me there's been like multiple instances where I felt tried to say the least I guess that's what you can say and what can I do but I can't do anything about it I just have to like deal with it because it's like they're not gonna do anything about it you can't do anything about it or you're gonna be looked at like to be looked at as the angry black person and it's really not like all i will say is after working in corporate america for a year and a half like it's really not made for us you know it's it's so i think that's why it's so important that we like create our own opportunities for our own people because Oh, and let's not even get on the fact of every time you change your hair, it's like, you know, it's just so amazing. And I understand the fascination, like, okay, I do, I might change my hair more than they do, but it's just like, to me, it's regular, like, you know, this is everyday life. This is not anything new. This is what I do, you know? As a black person, like, we get our hair done, you know, when you was younger, you got your hair, well, when I was younger, uh, like, in high school, middle school, I would get my hair done every two weeks, like, this wasn't, it's not new to me, and so, the fact that every time I change my hair, it's, like, a big deal, it's so, 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 so annoying to me. And I know this isn't, like, just specific to me, because I've seen, like, on Twitter, where there will be, like, a hashtag, like, black in corporate America, and... Granted, the things that I see people say, like, I haven't had to deal with such, like, severity of things. Please don't judge my beauty wonder. I have not been up to date with keeping my sponges clean. Um, this is not my color. I knew sis didn't know what she was talking about in Sephora, but whatever. Um, I know these situations aren't, like, specific to me, but... It can, it's just annoying having to deal with it, you know, having to deal. And coming from, like, an HBCU, and no, my HBCU did not handicap me when it comes to dealing with other people. It was just more so a comfortability of being around people who are, I guess you could say, that are more, that are like, just like you in the sense of, like, being black. Not in the sense of, like, personality, but just in the fact that, like, we're all black here. And so, no, I was not, like, unaware of white people. This is not working. Oops. I was not unaware of, like, how white people get. I just didn't have to deal with it. I wasn't forced to deal with it. I didn't really, well, I mean, I've worked with white people, but not, like, in the corporate setting. I didn't really get a taste of that until uh, my internship. 
that I did my last semester of school. And during that internship, I was in the process of preparing for graduation. And so I had taken my graduation pictures and created like my graduation announcements, invitations, all that. And two people, this on two separate occasions, I think I was like, you know, just sharing like, just shit, like, you know, just sharing the stuff that's going on with the people that I work with. And two different people asked me like, um, basically like asked me, did my mom go to college or am I the first person in my family to go to college? They were like, you just seem so excited. You know, are you the first person in your family to go to college? Like, no. And I didn't understand, like, why are you asking me that? Just because, like, because I'm showing you graduation pictures, you're asking me, like, am I the first person in my family to go to college? No, like, I have cousins that have multiple degrees. Like, my mother went to college. I have sisters that went to college. Like, no. And, I, and that was, like, my first taste of um, corporate America, I guess you could say. And that wasn't even corporate. That was a nonprofit. So when I got into the bigger scale of corporate America, it was just really, it's a, it still is. I've been there for a year and a half, and it still is a lot to deal with. Like, they don't, like, people don't mind their business. And I'll say they, they, because I work with majority white people. I don't work with a lot of black people day to day. I... A lot of times the project I'm, projects I'm on, I'm probably the only black person on that project. And, you know, all I can say is, it's just tiring. It's, it really is. It's really tiring having to deal with these people on a daily basis. And I'm not saying all white people, because all white people are not, like, bad everybody I work with is not bad but there are some and then it's like they don't even realize like what they be doing and what can you do about it you can't really say I don't know if I like this you can't really say like what can you say there, there have just been a few instances where I've wanted to like check somebody on something but I couldn't because I look like the angry black girl I just have to kind of let it go but it's really just like had we have been anywhere else you would have not gone away with that no but what can you do so if you're not in court you're not working in corporate america yet you just wait honey you wait because whew, it's a whole nother Ball game. And speaking of jobs, I have I'll have an announcement regarding that very soon. I can't say it yet because of other things, but I can't wait to share with you guys what's going on next. But um other than work, being in Kansas City, I don't do a lot. And it really frustrates me because I have, like, so many clothes to wear, but I don't go anywhere. Or there's not really, like, anywhere to go that's worth my good outfits that I took the time to pick out. This place, Kansas City, is not made for, it's not, to me, it's not really made for young people. But it's really not made for young black people. But that's just my opinion. That's that's me coming from North Carolina where I feel like. And it could be because I don't know a lot of people here. I know a lot of people in my age group here. But. Honey. The parties, the fun. Is just few and far between. And then this is a landlocked state, so it's not like any beaches or anything around. And there's not even like a whole lot. I don't think there's really many places that you can go for like fun. Like if I was in Charlotte, like I could go to Atlanta for the weekend. I could go to Raleigh. I could go to Winston-Salem if I wanted to. You know, it's just 
so many more places around Kansas, I mean, around Charlotte than it is in Kansas City. So I just feel so stuck. I mean, there is St. Louis, but Jab, you might not want to go to St. Louis. Might be best if you just stick to Kansas City. Lately, I have just been low key, low key tired of social media. I don't know if it's the people that I follow or what. If I need to follow new people, but and I do try that when it comes to like, I like to follow like fashion bloggers, you know, out for outfit inspiration. And then once I feel like uninspired by them, then I will like unfollow them and then find new bloggers to follow. But just like people I know. I just have not been feeling what I've seen. It's just a lot of like, to me, to me, it's just a lot of like flexing and a lot of competition and a lot of shade throwing and I don't be here for that. And then it's like, you just can't even, and then Instagram has that new, um, I guess what's called algorithm. So, like, your posts don't even get, like, the love that they used to. Or you don't even see certain people's posts anymore. And it's just, like, Instagram, you're doing a lot. Then Snapchat. I barely even get on Snapchat anymore because... What? Why would... What? I, I can't. I, it was nothing wrong with Snap. How it was. Y'all don't care about my little dollars. Well, I don't get no dollars from me. They don't care about my opinion. I don't know if you guys have seen my post-grad video. I was talking about like post-grad depression and you know me trying to figure out what I was gonna do next. I still feel oh that's too much. I still feel oh that's not good. Oh no. Did too much there. Trying to try new stuff. Knowing that's not how I get down. But I still feel like a year and a half since I've been working my job or whatever. I still feel like confused. I still feel lost. I don't have, I don't know what I want to do next. I don't know what I want to do for the rest of my life. I mean, I don't, I don't really worry about it. I'm not, like, sad about it. I mean, I'm glad I got a job. You know, that's one thing I am glad about. But. Ooh, this is not cute. Ooh. You might not need to do our makeup on camera because. Ooh. But, yeah, I still feel a little lost sometimes. Like, what is it that I really want to do? Well, I know what I don't want to do. But with that, I need to figure out. Oh, what the fuck did I do? This is turning out. Trash AF. That car door is dark, honey. It's not that bad. I need to blend a little more. I'm so sorry. This is supposed to be a chit chat, but good lord. I was getting a little worried about the face. It just wasn't hitting like I needed it to. But, um, yeah, I do. I'm like, I have some videos coming up that I'm just so excited to share. Like, um,. I guess I don't know if I want to go into like detail because either way like I'll say this so I started my YouTube channel back in June and for a couple months well, June of last year I I was doing pretty good you know being consistent for that period of time and then like something happened I don't well I know what happened 
and that's why I don't really want to go into grave detail but just like something that happened and I just wasn't feeling like myself and I was really struggling and like um how can I put this simply um it's hard to pour out of an empty cup so it's hard for me to come sit in front of a camera you know to kind of entertain if you will and I wasn't really feeling, you know, at my best. Um, and I don't think I've ever explained that. Like, why I... Because if you look at my videos, there's a big jump between, like, one video and then when I posted another video. And there is a reason behind that. And I, I will say, all I can simply say is, it's hard to pour from an empty cup. Um... And it took a long time for me to fill that cup back up. I mean, now it, now I'm good. But at that time, I was not. And so I couldn't. And if, if looking back, and even then, it frustrated me because I knew what I wanted to do. Like, I started this channel because... Well, I don't even know... But, okay, so... I didn't really know why I started my channel. I just knew. For a long time, I've always said, like, I want to blog. Um, I wanted to do something, you know, an outlet to, like, share my outfits or just share my thoughts. And I was okay, I have a blog. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I finally was like, okay, I'm going to make a YouTube channel for real because I was in Kansas City, so bored, didn't have anything else to do. And so I was like, this is what I'm going to do. So I finally feel, okay, I finally started it. And it wasn't until recently that I figured out why I started it. And I started it because I want to um, share my story, share my experience, share my knowledge. Not even like going like deep into like my post, like my post grad video, but just like like how I did this bun or how I do my makeup. Like I just want to be able to share with other people. I want to be able to help other people. And so I'm just figuring out more here recently that that's what this is for. That's what I want to do. You know, if I can share my story or my experience in something that'll help somebody else avoid a mistake that I made or give somebody some guidance on something that they want to complete, you know, I feel great like with my skincare video I've gotten a few people like to tell me like I've tried what you suggested and I really see a difference in my skin you know I really appreciate you and it's like stuff like that even though it's just like a skincare routine like that's what I like to hear like that I help somebody you know get you know improve their skin so now that I figured out my why I've become more motivated in regards to my channel uh, than I was when I first started it. And there were, like I said, there were other factors that went into me not being productive. And I will share that here soon. I can't, just can't right now. Um, but I just will say, like, it just feels good to finally figure out my why and to finally be able to sit in front of a camera and just share, like, I love to share with people. I love that I can do this. What's about to happen? Hey guys, so this is kind of where my video um, messed up. My camera was about to cut off and I had no idea what it was doing. This is why I call, <clears throat> this is why I call this video a fail because not only did my camera mess up, this is my first time doing my makeup on camera and I was just not feeling it. So because it cut off, there will be kind of a follow up video, but to explain what I was talking about in the video and to just kind of finish out the thought that kind of got interrupted in this video so thank you guys so much for watching um please don't forget to subscribe and I'm so excited to get more content out for you guys